Hello, my name is Martin Fogarty. I'm National Hurling Development Manager and we have put together some videos which you might consider using in your training sessions. Some of the exercises we've been using have been around for quite a long time and others I have picked up from my former colleague and Kilkenny Senior Hurling Coach, Michael Dempsey. Basically, we're concentrating on the six essentials of hurling which are rising and catching, stroke handling, hook and blocking, and striking and hand passing. We have also included some mini games and some elements of a game which might be beneficial to you. Really I suppose um, skill development is about getting the skill right first, then getting it fast and then getting it fast under pressure. So I think every training session should be maybe half the session skill development and the other half a game or a match and um, the game being the most important part of the session. So hopefully the skills and the drills will be of benefit to you. Thank you very much. Every aspect of raising the ball is hugely important and should be practiced continually. Two-handed lifts, one-handed lift, the jab lift, the roll lift, a moving ball, a stationary ball. Raising with the heel of the hurl, as some of these players are doing, is not ideal and can be very costly. Sometimes a player will miss a ball, so it's very good practice to coach them in retrieving, in coming back, that when they miss the ball, they'll run back pick it and go again. Hand passing at like various distances, even up to 30 or 40 metres, both stationary and on the move, is an essential skill and is often neglected. Proper technique is important. Some of the players here are actually throwing the ball, or at least will be blown for throwing and should change their technique. Here the players are striking, various striking, striking high ball, striking low ball, striking to the hand or striking to the feet. Again, it's an essential skill and players should continually walk off both sides and vary the distance. Running towards the ball, in other words, coming to meet the ball, working on your touch, again is an essential skill. This is a variation on rising, striking and hand passing. Players are also working on movement and evasion. Exercises like this can be ideal for warm-up, but again, every training session should probably have an element of rising and catching. Lines of four, hurling on the ground is one of the oldest drills in the book and is hugely beneficial. It is excellent for coordination, sharpness, getting your eye in, and even for fitness. The end players control and strike the ball as quickly as possible, whereas the middle players move towards the ball and keep the ball moving. You can then move along to striking from the hand, again where players move from side to side, and you can even mix both skills where the first player pulls on the ground and the second player lifts it, carries it and strikes. And it can also be transferred into a shooting drill, as the players are doing here. Player one strikes to player two, player two feeds player three, and player three strikes for a point. Striking is one of the key skills of the game, and there are so many different types of strike that you just probably need to work on some element of it in every training session. So here we have the players striking right and left, 
at various distances and various types of striking. Striking to the hand, striking to the feet, hopping the ball on the ground. You can just build it up over a period of time that they're getting experience at all levels of striking. Moving towards the ball, stepping to the side before they strike the ball are also little skills that should be built into your training. So here we have the players moving towards the ball as they would in a game, because if they don't, their opponent is going to get the ball before them. Players are now working on long striking. And this is an essential skill also, that you strike a ball as far as you can and built into that is catching. So players are working on striking as far as they can, getting a good position, catching the ball and returning it. This is a variation on long striking where two players are working together. One catches the ball and hand passes to his partner and his partner then drives it as far as he can down the field. It works on teamwork, it works on vision, it works on laying a ball off to your teammate when you're under pressure yourself. Again, I would like these players to be striking longer. Players in this exercise are attempting to run at maximum speed collect a ball that is moving to them at pace and without breaking stride deliver the ball back down to the far end of the field. It's extremely difficult, it's one little error and the drill will break down. In a game if a player doesn't go at top speed to the ball his opponent will get there before him. If his touch lets him down his opponent will win the ball and if he slows down to strike his opponent will hook him. Here we have players hand passing a ball at a close distance but they're moving around the field. This replicates a game and the distance should be increased over a period of time. Players here are moving around the field striking the ball to each other. Ideally one player makes a break away looks for the ball and his colleague tries to strike the ball straight into his hand. Players initially start reasonably close but as time moves on they get further and further and further away so that eventually they're possibly striking 50, 60 and 70 metres accurately. A variation on striking in trees can be instead of striking to the hand you strike low on the ground into a player's pat. Again to replicate maybe a forward moving onto a ball and picking it up at pace. Before hooking and blocking, players must have a good control and use of their hurl and also good footwork. A hurl that is not too heavy and not too short will produce best results. So this little exercise works on handling a hurl, works on a little bit of movement and is an introduction to hooking and blocking. Hooking itself is best practiced initially without a ball, even in slow motion to develop good technique. Using one hand produces the best results. Even adult players might never have practiced hooking, so they might try this. Some of these skills are as relevant for an adult as for an under five player. Locking is all about keeping your eye on the ball and having good control of your hurl. Start slowly with the striker making it easy for the blocker initially and then making it harder as technique improves. Coaches can come up with their own exercises to practice these techniques. Using a soft ball initially is often good practice as the fear of 
getting hit with a leather ball can sometimes cause a player to turn away from the slitter instead of keeping their eye on it. This is a very difficult exercise that works on striking, catching, hand passing, support and timing the run. Ideally, the players are moving at maximum speed to replicate a game. However, it is not as easy as one might think and the slightest mistake will result in the drill breaking down. In a game, that generally amounts to losing possession or missing a scoring opportunity. Seven players is the ideal number for this exercise. It will not be suitable for players that haven't mastered the art of striking, catching, handling a ball. So you can see from this exercise that um, depending on the level of ability your players have, whether you decide to do it or not. There are some variations into the same exercise, initially running straight down the field, then a variety can be the attacking players run diagonally across in front of the player with the slitter. Again, trying to replicate situations that might arise in a game. The player in the centre can knock down the ball and on this occasion the players are working on getting in for a break, raising the ball, continuing on and maybe even taking a score. If you have 14 players, ideally you'd set up two grids. If you have 21 players, you set up three grids so that players are getting plenty of activity and not standing around too much. This is a nice little exercise for sharpening up players, particularly in the lead up to maybe a big game. Players are working on short striking with both sides. They're working on handling, laying off the ball and touch. They're also working on interval running, that is changing pace as they show for a pass, which is a very good form of physical training. The idea is to strike to the blue cones and then run diagonally to the red to receive a pass. So in a game, when you're looking for a pass, you don't run up to the player with the ball, you run out to the side of them. There are variations in this exercise also. Initially, players can strike to the hand, then they can strike to the feet, and then they can also hand pass. So it's up to coaches again to vary the drills to suit their own needs, to suit the standard of their players. Here is another exercise that again works on striking, handling the ball, timing the run and looking for a layoff at maximum pace. Again, it is not easy because if there is a deficiency in any of the skills involved, the drill will break down. What we're looking for here is the first player strikes long, the second player times his run and comes at maximum speed to take a layoff and would then continue on maybe towards the goals to take a shot. If a player runs too early in a game, he's going to bring an opponent with him and it, it is pointless. If the player's striking ability is not up to the standard, they just can't do this drill. If their handling ability is not up to the standard, they can't do it either. So you've got to gauge the standard of your players when using this exercise. This is a little possession game, which again can be used in a confined area first and maybe later on in a wide area. It works on hand passing, striking and moving into position. First of all, the players are working unopposed in order to master the techniques and then they move to an opposed game. The 
The objective in the opposed game is to get as many accurate strikes as possible without losing possession. If a strike is not on, the players use a hand pass. If the players that do not have possession are working hard enough, then their opponents should not get a strike away. Condition games like these replicate a part of a match and can be very beneficial. Fouling is not allowed at all as that would result in a free and a free normally results in a score. So players are encouraged to pass the ball with their hand if the strike is not on, they're encouraged to move into good positions. Those that don't have the ball are encouraged to pick up the man with the ball or pick up the runners. The possession game using maybe 7v7 can be worked in maybe an area of 40 metres by 40 metres, but then it can be extended into maybe using uh, a quarter of the pitch or a third of the pitch, as would be in a normal game where you have six forwards and six backs possibly inside a 50 metre line. This is another example of a difficult game that will not suit all players. Uh, can again can be worked in a confined area and also in an open area. Players compete to shoot for a point. When in possession, the players are not to shoot unless the score is on. In other words, they don't waste the ball. When they are not in possession, they work hard to ensure that their opponents cannot get an easy shot. For variety, players can maybe be allowed to leave the box or more players can enter the game from different parts of the pitch, again, to replicate a match. 12 players is the ideal number to give those players enough work to keep them busy, however, with sufficient recovery. Absolutely no fouling is permitted, as a foul in a game amounts to giving your opponent a handy point. In the example here, there are far too many players waiting for their turn, so ideally another coach would take half of those players up to another set of goals. With all of these exercises, if a player is deficient in raising the ball or hand passing the ball or striking the ball, you'll very, very quickly see that the drill doesn't work, so you've got to go back then to the essentials or the basics of striking and catching, raising and handling. This game initially works on hooking. The game commences with the striker allowing his opponent to hook him to build his confidence and technique. Then after the initial hook, it's game on and each player attempts to score a goal. The game works on hooking, blocking, taking on your opponent, standing up your opponent and striking. It also works on the goalie's skills and is excellent for fitness. Ideally, six players on each side of the goals gives a good mix of working and recovery. We can call this the goalie challenge. We all started our hurling with this exercise played in the back garden or school field using jumpers or school bags for goals. It is a great exercise for shooting, blocking, catching and general sharpness. And once again, depending on the ability of the players, you can vary the distance between the goals. The game is the most important part of any training session. A variety of games ranging from 1v1 to 15v15 all have their own values and will help to develop the complete player. Players should be given experience in all positions and a range of conditions can be deployed to focus on various components of the game or particular aspects that the coach wants to work on.
Here we have a 6v6 game which is very very beneficial as players are getting plenty of ball, there's plenty of space and it encourages skills that might not be developed in a 50 in a side. Sometimes it's good practice if you have 30 players and you intend playing a 50 in V15, you might spend 10 minutes playing three sets of 5v5. So your 30 players are getting plenty of movement and plenty of ball. To neglect ground hurling, in my opinion, is foolish. There are many times in a game when a quick flick or a ground strike is the best option. It could be to score a goal or to clear a line before being closed down by an opponent or to get a ball in quickly to a colleague who has just found some space. I favour a normal game of hurling where players are encouraged to focus on ground hurling. You might look for an emphasis of say 80% ground hurling which means that if it's foolish to play the ball on the ground, you don't play it on the ground. But at the same time, your emphasis is on striking on the ground. The key to any sport is to practice and master all the individual skills. Then at a given time in the game, to decide which skill to deploy for maximum gain for your own team. Here is an excellent example as to why ground hurling should be practiced. It's a magnificent goal scored by Fergal Whiteley from Dublin against Kilkenny. People can ask how long it took to score the goal, maybe a fraction of a second, but it actually took about 10 years of ground hurling practice. Once again, we see another example of a magnificent ground strike. Seamus Cannon in the All-Ireland semi-final against Wexford scoring an outstanding goal. Almost every training session should have a match as part of it. That's what we're about, that's what we're ultimately training for. So if we have 20 players at training, we play a 10 v 10. If we have 30, we play a 15 v 15 at some stage. If the numbers are less than 30, you can narrow the pitch on one occasion or you can shorten it on another occasion to engage all your players. So remember, the game is what we are all about. Players join hurling clubs to play the game. However, we cannot play the game without the skills, so it's about getting the balance in your coaching sessions between developing skills and playing games. But remember, if your full session is all a game, that's a good session. <laughs>